All right. Here we are, another brilliant Monday night here in cold Melbourne. Um, very excited to be back with episode two of um, this new season of Zooming with Dan. Um, we are doing them fortnightly from here on in. Um, for those of you that tuned in a couple of weeks ago, um, I had the privilege of um, having a chat with Kyrul Islam, who, who is a gentleman in his mid 30s, um, who yeah has been living with the the disease um, since just before COVID actually, and and yeah, he, he was a very very inspirational young man living with his wife um, from Bangladesh, um, and I know I got a lot out of chatting with him um, here here on on screen, but also getting getting to know him um, prior and, and a few chats um, since. So tonight I'm very lucky to be joined by. Peter Chambers. Peter um, is a man that I've got to know over the past few months. Um, does live quite close to our office in Canterbury, which makes it a bit easy to get out to see him and, and have a coffee and muck around with his dogs and, and, and beautiful family. Um, Pete is a little bit unique, I guess, in the M&D world in that, yes, he's living with the disease and you'll talk a bit more about it um, as we go on tonight. But his desire um, is to help other people. You know, it's, he's got a very selfless attitude to the disease and, and where he's at, but he's doing many, many things um, to try and, and help other people, whether living with M&D or not. Um, it's all about a positive mindset, but I won't steal Pete's thunder. Um, I'll let Pete talk through that um, tonight. But I might hand over to you, Pete, to, to introduce yourself and, and let us know a little bit about you as a person, family life, sport yep. life, that's a big part. And of course, your MND journey. So hello, Pete. Sure. Yep. Um, thanks for having me on. Uh, so yeah, it's a privilege to be on and sort of, you know, these things gain, gain momentum over time. And uh, um, it's funny what COVID delivered to us, to us uh, wasn't it? That um, all these things we never even thought of, uh, you know, become opportunities to spread the word in a different way and whatever. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's good to be a part of it. So thank you for having me on. My privilege. Um, yeah, look, where do we start? I mean, that's the you know the question for everyone, isn't it? Um, I um, I'm 59, just turned 59. Um, I've you know led a very much an, an average Joe kind of uh, existence for you know for a long, long time. I worked in banking, um, went to uni, had no idea. I, I did a, a business degree with an accounting major and had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, uh, other than the fact I enjoyed not working with numbers and. Um, Found myself in a bank, and you know, thirty odd years later, um, you know, I was still there, and and, and enjoyed it. I, you know, had a good career, and um, uh, you know, some some real highlights in there, and um, had a great time. But uh, again, you know, you, it's just a, I suppose, you know, we all don't know where our life journey is going to take us in that regard. So um, yeah, then that was my life, uh, you know, career banker for uh, for a long, long time, and. Uh, until um, yeah, I, I had a, an earlier than anticipated um, go at retirement for health reasons, but uh, we'll get onto that. Um, so from a family life perspective, um, very happily married to Lisa, uh, two boys who are 20, twin boys who are 22 in about 10 days time. Um, so uh, so they're, they're wonderful, absolutely wonderful young men. I'll, I will stop referring to them as kids at uh, some point. I'm not sure when that'll be, but no, they're very much young men these days and um, and wonderful, wonderful, wonderful guys. So very privileged to have them in my life. Um, yeah, other than that, two dogs, as you uh, as you touched on before, Dan, um, a Staffy and a Staffy Cross who, uh, who keep us busy and they're, they're a lot of fun as well. So um, live in Carnegie, been here for nearly 20 years. And um, yeah, uh, as I say, it was sort of a, you know, somewhat of a, an average existence um, you know, that uh, many people can relate to, I'm sure, up until a game-changing event a couple of years ago. <laughs> Before we get into that, I forgot to mention that we're very lucky to have you tonight, Pete, because I know you're an avid uh, Lego Masters fan and <laughs> cutting into your Lego Masters time, so I appreciate <laughs> the... Uh, it's Marvel Monday too, Dan. It no, means nothing to me, sorry, mate. <laughs> no, no, no. I've, I've t I'm recording it, so no, I'm not. <laughs> oh, I know you are. Um... <laughs> We'll go into um, a bit more about your life later, but I guess, you know, we are here to talk about, you know, your M&D journey. It, it is why we're here. And, and let's start a bit about with your diagnosis and, and where you're at currently, what it's affecting you. Because look, on, on screen, you know, 
as we know, a lot of the time you come across like you don't have MND. Um, yeah, sure. But as yeah. we all know, it does affect people in different ways. So talk me through the, the beginning um, and yeah, where you're currently at. Yeah. So look, the early symptoms, and again, it's, you know, it's probably symptomatic, if that's the right word, of, um, of you know, what so many people have gone through. But uh, you know, my, my left hand, um, I just noticed I was having trouble doing up buttons and my right arm, I sort of struggled to get it above my head a little bit. And um, so I actually had some spinal surgery. It was recommended, uh, sorry, more well, neck surgery, spinal fusion in my neck. And uh, came out of that, uh, went, well, you know, I, I came out of that worse than I went in. So um, uh, then the, you know, the, the looking under every rock they could find started um, and went on for about 18 months. So that was um, surgery nearly three years ago, actually. I had the surgery and um, I was, uh, you know, sort of informally diagnosed late 19 and then, um, you know, formally diagnosed with confirmation in, in um, early 2020. By that stage, I'd sort of lost most of the use of my right arm and my left hand was, was quite weak. Um, and it was you know, described as flail arm, uh, slow progression. Um, and at the time I was given about you know, 12 months or so, which it's, it's past 12 months, but um, before my arms would uh, you know, sort of really deteriorate. Um, look, you know, things are challenging now with my arms. I struggle to address myself. I struggle to do most things really. Um, and um, yeah, it's oh, look. I don't know, but you, you know, again, I'm talking on behalf of a lot of people. I'm sure that you know you learn to live with it. Um, you know, that's just your life changes and you, you, you cope and you move on. So I'm very much in that camp now of um, you know of, of coping with it all, and um, I do accept it. Um, I don't like it, but I accept it. Um, so you adapt your life accordingly, and you know, friends, family, all that stuff. Uh, you know, has helped me adapt and, and helped me to you know, lead what I consider to be a pretty normal life right now. Yeah. It's, hearing you talk, we did have Pete as our guest speaker at our Day of Hope last Sunday. And um, yeah, as I say, you are unique because what you have isn't normal and the way you can live a, a normal life at the moment is, is still quite incredible. I know sport's been a big part of your life over the years and yep. um, obviously this significantly impacts any participation. You're only in your late 50s, Pete. You could still be playing veterans, something rather, I'm sure. Um, yeah. So, yeah, look, I, this is a bit of a shameless plug. You you were awarded life membership of St Kilda Cricket Club on the weekend. So, yeah. Yeah, thank, yeah big congratulations there. Thank I you. know cricket, um, I've learned over time, was a huge thing for you and you're a pretty handy fast bowler. Um, um. Yeah, no, I, um, I yeah, I had a good cricket career. Um, I played at Richmond and St Kilda. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, sort of finished my, uh, well, I played five Richmond at sorry, five years at Richmond, then moved to St Kilda, and uh, and that's sort of where I found my home and um, finished playing there. Uh, came back as chairman of selectors for a few years through the nineties. Yeah. And then had the the boys were born, so sort of um, put the queue in the rack for a little while um, in terms of cricket and. Yeah, then sort of once the boys got older again and, uh, and I could spare the time, got back on the committee, got involved again. So it's really just been, um, you know, administration, I suppose. Uh, you know, yeah, a, a career there spread over uh, a playing career and also an administration career as well. So um, love it. One of those great places, you know, one of the most historic, you know, 1855. Um, the cricket was first played at the Junction Oval. It hasn't moved from the Junction Oval. And I don't know how this works, but I'm told that it, it, um, it, the, the club predates the, uh, the town of St Kilda or the suburb of St Kilda. So I'm not exactly sure how, how that works. But um, uh, yeah, so it's the, it is the oldest, uh, oldest thing in St Kilda. So, you know, when you think about what's come before us, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty amazing um, you know, thing to look back on, which is I had the privilege of doing on Saturday night when I was a, a ward of the life membership. And you, just, you, know, you know, look at names on the wall and those sorts of things. It's, uh, it's extraordinary. So it's very happy, very happy. Huge honour. I know you're a pretty mad Tigers fan in the footy. Yes. <laughs> You've been very lucky recently. Yeah, no, it's, uh, that's been a journey as well. That's been a journey. It's sort of, um, you know, you go from, from uh, you know, expecting to fall over at some stage to this miracle that uh, you never saw coming. And, you know, now, now it's a touch of arrogance kicking in. <laughs> so, uh, which I'm it's sure, you know, happen. everyone felt sorry for Richmond for a long time and then, Oh, you know, good on pat on the back. They won't last very long, and then all of a sudden we 
we take over the world for a couple of years and everyone gets sick of us really quickly. And I, and I completely understand why. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm hearing you coming from a <laughs> suffering bomber fan. Yeah, well, you'll get there. I just wanted, I guess I wanted to touch on the footy um, a little bit because I know, I know you, you, you know, you love your footy. Um, you wear your, your big freeze beanies. And, and I just wanted to touch on that because it is a big day today in the M&D community here, here in Melbourne and, and nationally yeah. with the um, vitamin D's launch of the big freeze beans. Um, I know it's a, it's a really unique place to work in this space when you, you see hundreds of thousands of people walking around um, in the beanies and footy lovers and, and Neil Dunn and her admirers. And yeah, it's always, always a big time when the beanies are launched. But I guess, you know, at MD Victoria, we, we encourage the beanies, but we also really point out that um, the work of MND Victoria um, is very different to the work of Fight MND. And, um, you know, as you know, Pete, MND Vic is all about the care, support, and um, equipment yeah. to people like yourself living with the disease. So, yeah. Um, just wanted to acknowledge the work of Fight MND, but also really point out that difference yeah. that those beanies are not MND Victoria, um, they're, they're going to a different cause. So, um, I think the, yeah, the, the awareness is still so important, though, isn't it? Oh. Absolutely. Just, yeah, those blue beanies, I think they're a bit, a bit more grey this year. Um, we'll be everywhere soon. And um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. special to see because we're all... It is, it's very much. Yeah, involved. very much. And you take, um, you know, you take Neil's efforts out of the equation and, um, you know, you, I dare say as an organisation, um, you know, you're battling to get the, the recognition to what you've currently got as a disease. And as a consequence, people like me and, uh, and others out there are, you know, aren't getting the benefits of um, indirectly of, uh, of the work that fight MND too. So I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's been a wonderful cause all up. Exactly right. Good segue into MND Victoria and, and the support that um, you're receiving and, and have been since day one. How about you um, talk to me a little bit about Fran, probably in particular, um, but also sure. um, how you've been working with, with us. Yeah. Yeah, look, you take, and, and um, as I said before, I was, um, in the, well, you know, a probable a di probable diagnosis in uh, December of 19. Um, and we sort of took it on face value that it would be the diagnosis mm. without having it confirmed. And um, uh, of course, didn't know that MND Victoria would, existed and why would we? But, um, you know, Fran was out here within sort of 48 hours of uh, putting in a phone call. Um, and I remember the, the call I made and I uh, couldn't tell you who picked up the phone, but you know, the, just the, the the assistance that was provided absolutely immediately was so reassuring. And then to say, you know, where do you live? And uh, Fran will be looking after you. And you know, get a call from Fran five minutes later, and you know, I'll see you on Tuesday, kind of thing. And um, you know, bang, there it was. It was just, it was just leading into Christmas, tough time, all that. Um, yeah, it was it was just exceptional the support that we got, and then the ongoing support as well. That. Um, you know, the number of times I sort of raise something with Fran and you know, leave it with me, leave it with me, leave it with me, and um, and, and things get done. So, um, yeah, just uh, again, you, you don't know these wonderful organisations exist until you do find out for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, and then once you are supported, it's uh, you know, again, you take it out of the equation and just think, how the hell would you battle through without that support on your on your own? And you know, it just takes the, it means you can, you know, concentrate and, and spend more time emotionally dealing with it because you haven't got it in your face, you know, 24 seven, having to do things you don't want to do and ask questions you don't want to ask. Um, yeah, it's, it's just so supportive and so reassuring. Yeah, I know I've just spoken about Fran, like she's, you know, one of our, well, she's one of our amazing staff. And Fran is one of, one of 14 um, advisors um, in, in Victoria. So, um, I think she loves working with you as much as um, you appreciate. Yeah, it. Look, we've got a great relationship. She's, she's wonderful. Yeah, and we, uh, you know, we're similar age and all that stuff, and kids' interests and blah blah blah. So um, yeah, it's it's been a really, you know, it's, it's a friendship thing as much as it is a sort of a professional relationship. So yep, yep. Talk me through Pete's legacy. You know, I guess this is another good, good segue um, from what we were just talking about um, about the role we do at M and Victoria. Um, you know, you have a campaign page with us. Yeah, um, and and you're looking to to help raise funds, I guess, for MD Victoria and and many other things. But I'll let you talk. Yeah, um, sort of. It's, there's a heap going on. It's it's one of those things. I never, you know, I'm as busy as I've ever been. Um, and again, most people in my position will understand uh, the limitations of of the day that we've got because you know fatigue's an issue and and those sorts of things. So a fair while ago, I just put one thing in my diary a day, um, and you know, two things come up. I'll think about it, but. Um, 
generally, you know, I know what days I've got something on, so I just limit myself to doing one thing a day, but that thing can take three or four hours and, um, and get quite involved. So look, I, I don't know, you know, whether I selected to be involved or, you know, sort of, it just happens as a consequence of who you are or, you know, how it all came to be. But, um, you know, I, I needed to get involved. I needed to spend my time, I need, needed to be busy. Um, I needed to be doing things and it, 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 look, it sounds silly, um, but this was an opportunity for me to, to give back and, you know, let's go back a sec to, you know, what I call my ordinary distance before and, you know, how do you make a difference and whatever. So I did see an opportunity to make a difference there. I didn't sort of set out to say, you know, I'm going to change the world or, or anything else, but I just, you know, if, if something came up where I could help out and, and give back and, and whatever else, you know, I was going to take it. That's sort of the, the attitude I took from, from day one. Um, and that's, you know, been very real since then. And, and things have just sort of evolved um, into that where, you know, <laughs> friends asked me, you know, if something's come up, friends said, well, would you want to be involved? And the answer's always just been yes. I mean, because uh, I do like to be involved and I, it's an experience, it's a new experience for me. I'm meeting great people. It keeps my mind moving and ticking over. It motivates me, all that sort of stuff. So the legacy things really just come from there where, um, yeah, you know, you and I had a chat about the importance of the 40th year and, and whatever else and would I like to get involved? And, you know, again, it was a very easy yes, just to say, um, you know, yeah, how can we? So just working through a few things at the moment in terms of fundraising and, you know, friends and uh, it's only really sort of just kicking off now, but, you know, friends and family. And, and I know that, again, you and I have spoken about things that are coming up this year and how we can crank it up that little bit more. So there's a lot to come this year in terms of um, activity and, and what it's what it's going to look like. But, um, but yeah, it's really just, I don't, again, I can't, I can't explain it, Dan. It's, it's, it's a strange one. I, I didn't set out to do any of this, but it kind of found me rather than the other way around or as much as me finding it, it found me. Um, but yeah, I've just been, you know, very motivated to, to be as active as I possibly can in this area. And not only, you know, I've mentioned the Pete's legacy and you've touched on that a couple of times, you're calling it your M&D courier, um, which, yeah. which is not a term I'd ever heard of or thought I'd ever heard <laughs> here. Um, talk me through why you, why you see it as your, your M&D courier. Yeah, so it was, the term was coined by a friend of my wife's, Lisa, um, and we're, we're away and uh, um, so... Lisa's girlfriend's Tess and we're, she's got a place up in the country and we just stayed with her a couple of days and um, she and I sat down and we're you know, talking about LinkedIn and, and she's you know very uh, successful corporate girl and and all that and um, you know just talking about LinkedIn and how do we sort of you know, get the message out there and whatever and she used the, the term you know MND your MND career is looking good or something like that I can't remember exactly what she said but you know it sort of rung a bell that um, about this you know um, my MND career and, and it kind of is it's sort of you know Again, it doesn't suck up uh, 40 hours a week, but it sort of sucks up the time that I can allocate to it. Um, and the important thing is I, is I enjoy it. I, um, you know, I've been getting more active on things like LinkedIn and not Facebook as much, but uh, you know, my, my network sort of sits in the LinkedIn community. So you know, for me to get out there and, um, and call on people that I spent a lot of years working with and um, alongside and, um, and, and those sorts of things. And you know, people I, I rate really highly and, you know, people I've got a lot of time for and um, it enables sort of them to come back as well. So that's yeah. that's kind of how it all came to pass. No, I love how you put your your former, you know, working corporate banking career side by side with your M&D career and, and you talk about, you know, how you're doing things now that you wouldn't have ever done um, yeah. back, back in that previous life or career or, or whatever you yeah. were. Um, yeah, you know, and it is. Different people, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's you know it's got its own little challenge. So it, I mean, good challenge challenges in a good way. That I mean, I, I have to think differently now, and um, you know, you, you come quite regimented in the way you think and the way you you act because it's your you know your job does influence your you know your lifestyle and and those sorts of things. Um, um, because it's it's what you do for so much of your your life. So to have something that's sort of turned completely on its head and and have a different set of challenges uh, and a different way of thinking about things and. And whatever it's, it's it's quite rewarding it's there's no question um you know i take the view that uh you know if, I, if i'm i'm happy in myself um you know i don't know whether that's going to have a, a positive influence on, on the rest of my life but i know not being happy with myself is definitely going to have a detrimental impact on me so um uh yes yeah, so it's, it's just a no-brainer in terms of 
um, you know, how I how I how I conduct myself and what I do on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. And I, I know a lot of what you're doing, you're trying to support, you know, the wider community, but it's also huge for your family. I know that, you know, that that legacy is is really what you're going to leave behind. And, and I know for you yep. that's a really important part of it too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Look, absolutely. And there's, you know, two or three parts of that. And um, you know, as I said, my boys are about to turn 22. And um, you know, the, the real driver for me and um was just to to be a role model for them. Um, you know, I, I probably was anyway in a different way, but um, you know, but you know, it was just a no-brainer for me to say, well, yeah, they are now seeing someone going directly going through adversity, and how do I want to be seen by them? You know, is it am I the bloke who just sort of rolls over and accepts it and gets kicked in the guts and you know and doesn't move on with his life, or do I do the opposite? And it was just very very easy decision to say, well. You know, I want them and 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 their mates and and their mates are wonderful, wonderful people. Um, you know, I, you know, they come around here and it's, you know, my nickname's Chambo and, you know, Chambo, how are you and and whatever else. So I got this great relationship with this group of sort of early twenties, you know, blokes and and um and it's 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 wonderful for me. It sort of gives me a step along as well. So, you know, I, I can be comfortable that that I've achieved that that piece. Um, and really, that's you know. And things have flowed from there, and and I, the other thing too, I, I needed people around me. I needed, needed. I knew I needed support of of friends in particular, outside of family, who you're always going to have support from. And you know, I didn't want to be the guy who wasn't receiving phone calls because I, I was going to whinge for the, you know, how are you going? Oh, you know, I'm terrible. You know, blah blah blah. blah, blah, blah. You know, no one's going to ring me. No one's going to engage in with me for that conversation. So, you know, I, I wanted them to pick up the phone. I wanted them to. Yeah, you know, be pleased to hear from me and and those sorts of things. So they knew the conversation would have the right tone to it. So that was so important for me as well, just to um, yeah, just to to drive that from from my end because I can drive that. You know, my mindset drives the outcome. So that was that was sort of so the two parts to it sort of, you know, the the legacy sort of came from from that sort of attitude. Yeah, I'm just going to put the the brakes on temporarily um, around this really positive talk. I got you know we obviously love how positive you are and. But as you know, and, and a lot of us know, that MND is a brutal disease. And, and it's very, you know, it's random. You don't know what edge they hold. So I just wanted to go back a couple of weeks, Pete, and you had a little, a little hiccup, a little scare. Yep. Um, and it, I guess, you know, it, for you, that would put things into perspective. So do you want to just talk through that? Because, you know, we know that MND is not all that positive and, and you're going to have your moments. And, and that, that's the reality of the disease. So do you want to yeah. talk? through that little sure. scare and, and yeah how, how you yeah well again the you know the MND community knows of that that dreadful three letter word peg um which none of us <laughs> will sort of get drummed into us early what it might look like and we might have to have it and those sorts of things so um so I had a uh, lung function test uh only not even three weeks ago um and you know same day um the results came through and I went to the rest, respiratory doctor and um, you know, we're already making times to go and, uh, and have the procedure, um, you know, all within an hour of having the test. So such was the, the drop off in my lung function. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, that's a massive slap in the face to, to say. And what, I, what it said to me was, you know, this is real. This is I'm sort of coping. My arms are, fa- you know, failing me slowly. Um, so, but you can, you can live with that, right? I mean, you know, other people just chip in and, and do things for you. But. All of a sudden, the peg became a you know a real reality check for me, and um, um, you know I remember I, I shed a tear just uh, waiting to go in. You know the doctor and the surgeon and the anaesthetist came in and sort of blah blah did their bit blah blah blah. You know, and again, this is real. This is real. So um, yeah, so that was really tough. And then I mean, again, you know, I don't want to oversimplify things, but I I reckon within forty eight hours, I just looked down and said, well, there it is. You know. What are, you, what are you going to do about it? I'm not going to change it. I can't undo it. Um, you know, so what kind of thing? And I, I really do think so what? Um, you know, what's it, it doesn't change me remotely as a person and what I can and can't do. And, and you know, this quality of life stuff, which is so important to all of us, but, you know, when you're in a situation of, of having the disease we've got, gee whiz, it sharpens you up in terms of thinking what's important to you. Um, and, and so that's again. I find it. I, I, I think I'm really fortunate that that I'm able to compartmentalise all this, and and I understand how others find it tougher and whatever else. But I, I just think I'm I'm really lucky to be able to, 
you know, sort of shrug my shoulders and shake my head and go, oh, well, you know, you know, another kick in the bum, move on kind of thing. And that's where I'm at. I, I'm genuinely comfortable with the, um, with the fact I've got a peg now. I don't like it. I don't like it for a moment. But, you know, I accept it and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. The red wine certainly won't taste the same. <laughs> we, um, we, we did a flush the other night and there was a, I don't know, it had a reddish tinge to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a laugh. Lisa and I had a laugh when uh, we looked and said, oh, hang on, is it one, you know, one glass too many or is it coming up again or what's going on? We didn't quite know how to do it. We just, you know, <laughs> flushed it away and sort of put it down to experience. <laughs> what, a light Pinot or a bit of a heavier Shiraz? What sort of colour? No, I think we had a Shiraz. I think we had a Shiraz, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it started. I think it was it was actually Friday night. And I generally don't, uh, you know, don't have much of a drink, but um, these days. But uh, and I worked my way through most of the bottle because uh, it was enjoyable watching the, the Richmond for the first half, and then uh, got absolutely thumped in the second half. So I didn't quite know how to react. So uh, <laughs> I poured myself a couple of extra glasses. <laughs> no, that's the way, well deserved. I think. Yes. <laughs> if I did that watching the bombers, I'd be stuck. <laughs> We, we've touched on, you know, some external activities um, and what you've been involved in. Do you want to just go into, you know, a little bit of detail around some of the podcasts you've been doing? They haven't yeah. been, you know, small scale podcasts. They've been quite, you know, quite a big audience. Yeah, no, it's been, look, that's again, so that's it probably gained momentum at that point. So mm. I did a podcast late last year with uh, Nick Brax, who um, some, you know, someone heard of it and, and Nick's, um, had his own so a friend of a friend of mine a really close friend of mine has, has been mentoring Nick from a, a business point of view so you know public knowledge so I'm not sort of telling any tales out of school here but you know Nick had his own challenges with um with mental health and he's documented that in his podcast and excuse me that's what's driven him and he's sort of making a, a business out of um, helping people with their mental health challenges so this mate of mine said you know you I've spoken to Nick and he th think you'd be a good guest so um, yeah, uh, on I went and it was a great experience for me. The, the best thing about it was all the stuff I've been running around my head for a couple of years. It just gave me a chance to go buy and, and get it out. Um, so that really did start the ball rolling in terms of, yeah, me just expressing how, where I was at, why I was feeling the way I was feeling. It was very th therapeutic for me. So, you know, really good experience. Um, and again, same friend, uh, uh, another guy, Andrew Jobling, who's doing, um, so he's a shameless plug, but um, Nick's series is Move Your Mind. So uh, get on that, get, uh, where, where you get your podcasts. Um, and Andrew Jobling does the wellness puzzle. And again, so my mate Phil um, put me in contact with Andrew. Again, same conversation. Yeah, it's exactly who I want to interview as a guest. And um, so that would have been sort of Archish, I think. We, uh, we did that one and released that one as well. So yeah, again, great experiences. And then um, you know, I had to chat to Fran about legacy and, and whatever else. And I just wanted to, for no real reason at all, but I wanted to do a, a, a you know, I wanted to capture it on film. Um, so um, uh, Fran put me in touch with Helena, who you've met, and some other people might know, um, who's got a, her family has a, a background in, in supporting people with disability. So it's a, it's close to her heart. Um, so we had a chat about, uh, you know, how, we, what we could capture, how we could do it, all those sorts of things. And um, again, so now you know, she's started up you know, things that are foreign to me, Dan, because I'm on the uh, my my age starts with a five. <laughs> but um, this you know this highfalutin thing called a YouTube channel, whatever that is. So I've got my own YouTube channel now. You're learning um, quickly, yeah. So uh, yeah, just look me up on YouTube, and there I am. So we've done uh, probably four or five videos. Um, we've got more ideas to come. Um, we'll probably use some of this conversation to. To put it out there as well um so yeah and, and you know that's that's so exciting i mean again five years ago what are the chances of me um you know having a youtube channel and helping people with with issues associated with a, a really serious illness and and not just that but others as well you know i've i've had some uh, a good mate of mine you know again had his personal challenges and and rang me and said i've just listened to your podcast and you know i've seen a lot of people over the last couple of years and you're the first bloke that made sense to me. Um, you know, how do I feel about that? I just feel unbelievable about that. That um, that my little podcast can can help. You know, help just help someone. Um, you know, yeah, and, and it's kind of a bit of a cliche, but you know, if this helps one person, well, I've done my job, kind of thing. Well, it's done more than that. And um, you know, I'm not the sort of guy that blows my own trumpet, so it's a little bit 
it's foreign to me that um, that I'm helping people in that regard. But but I know I am, and, and I've still got to get my head around how I can do more of that and and, and what I can do more of. Yeah. Um, because again, it's not my natural inclination to, to do that sort of stuff. But here I am with an opportunity to do it, and, and I'm grabbing it with both hands. Yeah, you, and it's you, fun. You, and it's you, fun. You're quite a special man because even now I'm just hearing that passion in your voice around around what you're doing and. And yeah, I think everyone would agree that it's quite special that you've chosen to live your life this way. And I thought it'd be a good way to finish up. Um, you know, we've, we've certainly spoken very positively around your journey or m and career, as, as we're calling it now. Um, yeah. What sort of advice would you offer to others going through the m and journey, whether they're, they're newly diagnosed, and this includes their families, um, or people that have been living with it for a little bit longer. And yeah. you've obviously chosen to live this way. Um, um, look, I have, and again, it, it, it found me as much as I found it kind of thing, the way I am. Um, I've, you know, three or four things that run through my head, and I completely accept that we're all different, right? And, I, and not for a moment am I going to say to someone, oh, no, 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 you have to be happy and you have to do this and you have to do that, because it's just, that's not the way the world works. We all think differently, we all got our own challenges, et cetera, et cetera. So, not for a moment I'm gonna, am I going to preach, but. Um, you know, to me, there's three or four things that really have worked. Um, and one is just is honesty. I reckon it's a great place to start. Um, I've had a number of conversations with myself, which have led to conversations with family and everything else where I've, I've, I've had to make the adjustment and honestly tell myself what's going on so that I could cope with it. And then I've gone, okay, well, I've got that bit in my head and I'll talk to my family about it because this is, you know, things happen gradually but things happen in stages as well so you hit another stage and you, you go bloody hell I didn't see that coming um and so yeah I had that little conversation with myself and okay good we've got a head around that have a conversation with the family the people that it's affecting um another one is um I, th I think acceptance I think for me accepting my situation and accepting what it means um has been really important as well and that sort of ties in with the honesty a little bit I think for me, perspective is everything. Um, you know, we're all in this community together and so we all know how bloody horrible it gets and, and whatever. But as bad as we're feeling, I have absolutely no hesitation in saying there are so many people out there worse off than what we are. And again, because we're close to this community, we probably see it. Um, there's a hell of a lot of people doing having a tougher job with MND than what I am. And I understand that and accept that. And I feel dreadful for those who are doing it tougher than what I am because I'm in a physical state where I can still enjoy my life so much more than what others can. So to me, you know, that perspective is is really, really critical to just be able to take a step back and say, no, nah, mate, just, you know, no, you, you, you don't complain, can't complain because you just can't. So um, so there's that aspect to it as well. And, and um, one of the podcasts... Um, Andrew Jobling said to me just in conversation, it sounds like you'd chosen to be happy. And I sort of that took a little bit to drop that that conversation. And and he said, and he sort of said it again, I thought, yeah, I, I probably have. And so um, I got done a bit of thought around that as well. And 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 uh, you know, I think happiness is a choice. We we can choose to be happy and we we can choose to get the most out of what out of our life. Um, so I think that's probably the other aspect that um, has been important for me. Very good. I think that's a really good place to leave it. I know I'm learning a lot from you as well. And, you know, over this year, I'm, Dan, I'm learning so much every day. Mm. You know, and, that, and that's why I, you know, again, I, I hesitate to say I'm enjoying it and that's fun and all that sort of stuff because it's bloody not, you know, we all know it's not. But, you know, um, you know there's aspects to it that, which, which I am uh, enjoying in, in very small font. <laughs> That's the way. And you know, yeah, as you said, you do have a great network around you. You know, your wife, Lisa, she's phenomenal. Um, yep. So big shout out to Lisa. Um, Thank you. Um, yep. But yeah, I think good place to wrap it up. Um, I hope people have found you as inspiring as I, I find you, Pete. And um, yeah, I think we'll catch up again soon and I'll let you get back to watching some Lego. And, look, and, and in all seriousness, Dan, I, I know that I've, I'm, I'm fortunate in this regard. Anyone I can help, please um you know who, however you want to make contacts um I, I i this is a passion of mine and you know if i can help anyone um directly indirectly whatever else uh, you know 
please, I'm not, I'm not afraid to sort of, um, you know, gives me, give me two bobs worth here and there. So, um, yeah, just finish on that note. Yeah, no, love your work. And people want to reach out to Pete, get it, get in touch with us at MNE Vic, um, Facebook Messenger, whatever you like. Um, yeah, I know that is Pete's passion and I've seen Pete help others before. So great way to finish, Pete. Thank you for your time. And, um, as I just said, go back and watch some Lego Masters. <laughs> we'll chat again soon. Beautiful. Thanks, mate. Appreciate yeah. it. See ya.